reprise de débat. Resuming debate, the Honorable Member for Abitibi Tevis Gamang. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm very pleased to rise and speak about the Alzheimer's strategy and other dementias, particularly considering that I had the opportunity to speak to my colleague's bill, Claude Gravez, who was, was the member for Nickel Belt, and he was a dear friend of mine. And uh, I say hello to him if he's following this debate. I think that this is an essential issue. If we take my writing, for example, Abitibi-Témiscamingue, uh, cognitive uh, problems and memory problems affect 15% of the population. So in 2012, it represented 22,000 people. And if we look at people who are suffering from Alzheimer and other diseases, we're talking about 3,300 people in Abitibi-Témiscamingue alone. If we look at projections to 2031, with the population that is over 65 would be beyond 40,000. So we might think that people suffering from Alzheimer and other dementias would affect some 6,400 people in my riding. So obviously with those kinds of figures, we can only realize the importance of having a true national strategy for Alzheimer's and other dementias. It's important because Alzheimer's is a sickness, an illness, where people will often be sick for years, 10, 15, 20 years at times, which can mean that there will be treatments that will have to be offered over a number of years. There can be long periods of time in hospital. And uh, we all realize that a stay in hospital is something that is very expensive for society. So having a national strategy for Alzheimer's allows people to perhaps stay longer at home to ensure perhaps that families will be able to live more harmoniously all together and they'll be able to uh, grow up with their family members and have a multi-generational household. There are many opportunities in terms of the National Alzheimer Strategy to uh, be uh, allow us to deal with this phenomenon and uh, it could allow us to grow much more harmoniously. Having someone suffering from Alzheimer's in one's family is not uh, an easy thing. Often at the beginning of the illness there are periods of time where there are memory losses but then other times where the person realizes more what's happening to them and often there's a great deal of anger when they realize what their deficits are and there's a lot of negativity so the beginnings of this illness is really not an easy time for the nearest and dearest. People um, lose their sense of security and once the diagnosis has been established more and more often it becomes complicated because we want to keep family members at home but constant monitoring is necessary. It's a bit like, how can I put this, having a child at home but with the strength of a man and what that can bring about as, con as a consequence is, uh, is difficult. So obviously for family members this can be really difficult to live with. Often they become exhausted particularly if you think about the number of years that this can stretch out over. Also, the difficulty of accessing services. So oftentimes people are on waiting lists for placements that can take months or even years before places become available in the specialized centers. And of course in those centers, there's the whole challenge of dealing with health care services. It's not like at home. Many of these centers um, like to have an approach that seems more like a family environment for families. But once again, it's far from perfect. There are many things that uh, they do for these people. It, it's not like at home, whether it's an issue of meals or uh, the, just the way in which things are done. And oft oftentimes what's really difficult for families is that progressively uh, 
the, the patients forget about the very existence of other family members. So mothers forget their children and their children come to see the mothers and they have no idea who they are. And after that, perhaps it's the husband or the parents. And it's, it's extremely difficult because uh, it, that hurts people's feelings. And when you, one tries to communicate with a, a person who doesn't remember who you are, it's really just not an easy situ situation. So I think if we put all of these strategy, all of these components together and have a national strategy, uh, that would be a great idea. It goes beyond just the issue of care, as I was saying earlier. It's also the support uh, we offer to caregivers, uh, the ability of families to have a multi-generational home with perhaps security systems that would be required to take care of a person with Alzheimer's to prevent risks of fires or accidents. And when we look at this strategy, it really just goes beyond the whole framework of hospital-based care or medical services. And that is why it's worthwhile s sitting down and looking at the whole issue of culture. When we talk about our Indigenous communities, for example, it's important to be able to ensure that they are able to receive treatment that takes their culture into account and that will be able to uh, do this without cutting them off from their own culture. Imagine when uh, someone is hospitalized with dementia, you know, people lose their memory mo moving backwards, so they forget the most recent things but remember things from early childhood. So oftentimes people in the First Nations communities forget how to speak English or French because the first language they learned was their Aboriginal language, and so they find themselves in a surroundings where the caregivers and medical staff aren't able to communicate with them because all they can remember is, let's say, Cree or Algonquin or something. So I think developing this strategy will allow us to understand the challenges and talk to all of the frontline workers, provincially and territorially, and not just to, to look at it purely on a medical level. And I think that is uh, one of the mistakes that uh, we make often, is that uh, we try to isolate the problem and study it purely, purely from a medical viewpoint, and the entire situation is not taken into account. And I think that uh, uh, we need to vote for the strategy. Last time we were only one vote away to ensure that uh, people who suffer from dementia, but and especially their families and uh, entourage, receive the support they need from this government, and uh, that an approach, uh, an, a, a cultural, culturally appropriate approach is applied when uh, caring with these people. So I hope sincerely that uh, this time we, it won't be a matter of one single vote, that uh, it will be a, a unanimous, uh, there will be unanimous support for this bill, which is, it's a conservative bill, but it's uh, based on uh, NDP work. Thank you. Uh,